Hi, I am Dr. D. Gennetti, and this is my co-host and service dog, Marquis. Marquis, high five. And a boy. Marquis, say hi. Say hi. And a boy. And who's our special guest today? You are right. Who's our special guest today? It is Jim Began and Deb Blood. Very good. Okay, lay down. Lay down. Here you go. So as you know, this is a show um, celebrating the lives of people with everyday people with disabilities. Um, and today, today I have two special guests with me, Jim Began and Deb Blood. Jim mm -hmm. is a retired computer programmer and Deb is a retired teacher and they are co-hosts of a TV show in Methuen called Yes We Can, In the Know About Disabilities. So welcome to my show. I'm so delighted to have the two of you Glad today. Glad to be here, Thank Dr. You. D. Thank you. So how did you come up with the show? Well, actually, Deb and I mem were members, are, are members of the Disability Commission in Methuen, and um, the mayor at the time wanted to have a show, had a show, and wanted a guest from the Methuen Disabilities Commission, and uh, I got elected. So I was on the show, and this TV station said, ooh, would you like a show? It's similar to what you've told me your situation was, so uh, we developed one. And Deb, how did you get involved with the show? Well, um, the mayor at the time uh, used to um, uh, hang out with my husband at the time, and uh, he knew of my disability. And he said, you do so well. He said, you know something? I need you on my commission for disability to reach out and to tell people that, you know, um, things can be done, things can be done. So uh, why don't you sign up for the commission? I did. And I went to the meeting, a couple of meetings, and then all of a sudden the idea was brought forth, as Jim said, about the TV show. And Jim said, is there anybody out there among the members that would be interested in hosting with me? And nobody's no. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing how people volunteer so readily. <laughs> so I was sitting there, I said, oh, I said, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> so, so it, you know, hence became uh, Jim, uh, Jim Blood and Deb Began, you know, we, we kind <laughs> so of. That, so that was four years ago. Yeah, four So that's years really ago, great. Right. And I neglected to mention that both Jim and Deb happen to have disabilities. They both happen to have MS. And we'll talk a little bit, we'll talk about your show first, and then we can talk a okay. little bit about mm -hmm. MS because mm -hmm. it affects everybody differently. Mm -hmm. um, so h how did you choose topics for what you thought people would be interested in? Well, right away we picked um, it, topics that are on the City of Methuen website related to disability. Uh, which I had put together, um, there is um, sections on where you can find services, where you can, how you can advocate for your positions, how you can, there's part on uh, handicap parking rules and regulations. So that wow, kind that's of great. drove where we went in the beginning. And um, there's been shows that Deb suggested that were very, very good. We did one. Well, you can mention those. Yes, yeah, Smart 911. There was a big, big push a couple of years ago. Methuen bought into Smart 911. Do you we, have it here? Um, I think they're trying to get that okay, right so now, I'll, but we I'll, don't have it. But so I, I think it's an awesome program, so is, you can tell yeah. us about it. Yes, yeah, Smart 911 is. Um, where you sign up and you fill out a profile and you put your name, your address, uh, anything uh, that is common to you. I have MS, I put that down. Uh, if I had somebody living with me, if I had animals, uh, what is their two exits to get in and out? So, you know, you fill this all out. What happens is in an emergency, when you dial 911, your profile, Deb Blood needs help at 63 
Okay, so my profile comes up. To and the who, dispatcher. To the dispatcher. And, and then, only the dispatcher. Yes, yeah, dispatcher. only. It, this is completely, completely private. This only goes to that and to the police and to the fire, you know, the fire station. Mm -hmm. uh, so that when they're driving to my house, they, they can see my profile and know exactly that I have two entrances, where my bedroom is, where the stairs are, that I can, I, I, you know, um, I wobble yeah, when I walk, walking. you know, mm -hmm. I have delayed stepping. They know that so that they'd have to probably come in with a, uh, a chair or a stretcher for right. me to get me out of there. And think how important that is for someone that needs to take oxygen That's out with them. That's what I was them. just mm -hmm. thinking. Or, yeah, so they would know if somebody was on oxygen or... Yes. Or, or is autistic and is, is scared by s people bursting into the house. Mm -hmm. and, right, you know, right. So it's important that the, they have that pre-knowledge so they can effectively do the job. Right, and it must be good, like if we lose electricity, if they know who's got life support equipment, any type of you know, life yeah. supporting equipment. So that is really great. Um, we try to um, do a, a, a disaster preparedness list for um, people with disabilities in Wilmington. And what we found really difficult is that people didn't want to be on a list. Um, they don't want to be. The sign up is ridiculously low. It, it, yeah, so you have that same problem. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know what's so ridiculous <coughs> about that? People have no problems putting on their Facebook page, I'm out of town in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It's Come so rob me, <laughs> but they don't want the police to know <laughs> yeah, where they live. Really, I think it's the privacy issue that's yeah. what I think, you know, they're afraid of. But it works. It's, it's such it's an enormous help it is, for, the, it for is. them to know. And if we had to do an emergency evacuation or anything like that, it is so helpful. Yeah. And I'd love your example if it, there's a person with autism that mm -hmm. they know mm -hmm. that there's somebody there who might be very scared of you coming into mm -hmm. the house. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And, and or you can also alert them person. if there's a service dog or. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. exactly. Or or a dog that you have to watch out for. Right. A right. regular right. Yeah. dog. Yeah. Or yeah. you have construction in your house or whatever. So it's it, we had the um, dispatcher actually come on the show and yeah. talk about the plan. And we had a firefighter, a, a captain in the fire department who was very interested in publicizing this. So it was really good. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then after the fact, Jim had brochures made out that we could leave it, uh, you know, the market basket, uh, CVS, things like that, City Hall, and things. And I took it upon myself. There was, at the time, this is before pre-COVID, um, there's a, a gathering place in Methuen for coffee and donuts. So I took them there and I would go to tables and I'd say, excuse me, do you know about this service that we have in Methuen? No, well, no, what is it? And I, you know, did a brief summary of it and I'd leave the brochure with them. I'd say, you owe yourself this. You really do to have, you know, connect with that and make a profile so that if you need services, it's, it's automatic so and it just shows right up. Right. Yeah. You know, I was so impressed with that that when they're coming to the house and they can see my profile and know exactly what I need and how to get into the house and things. And it's saved, not in a saves time. It's not in a file where anybody else yep. can get that information. It's yeah. held very privately. I think that's really great and it's worth um I, I think our town is looking into that right now. Yeah. Well, the component, uh, you know, really is to, is to get it. Yeah. I once was in traffic in Haverhill. Uh, they have a Santa parade, and that's a big to-do pre-COVID. And uh, I was talking to the police officer, and I said, do you have SMART 911? She said, no, we don't. I said, wow. Well, and I started to tell her, she said, that's amazing. I wish we had something yeah. like that. Yeah, that's great. Y you know, uh, so what other topics have you... You, you've had some very interesting topics well, on your show. Deb? Deb, yeah, came up with one. I said, you know, Jim, 
we have had a lot of serious information that had to be dispersed. Jim is too information oriented. Oh yeah, so Deb's, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's, do let's do something fun. Let's do something fun. I said, uh, Jim, let's do dating with disabilities. He said, well, how? That might be a good idea. I said, yes, it is. And we got a lot of information from a very good source, which is Easter Seals. Mm -hmm. Their website is fabulous. And that's where we got almost all the information mm -hmm. for the show. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that was good. The information, and it was, it was, it was brought not just information, but we had a good conversation about it. Yeah, we had fun doing it. So, yeah, so your the style of your show is a little different from this. So y it's a conversation with the two of you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and our guests, and mm -hmm. and also I think where this is a little different. You've explained that your show is to make people aware that there are people out there in the community who are disabled and are still doing things. Um, well, our focus is we want to provide information for the disabled for those who th uh, care f have know someone or care for someone who's disabled but for people in general because what people don't realize is that th every person is one accident or one illness away from becoming disabled that's right that, I, that's what i say um, you know in, in everybody's life, at some point, they will at least be temporarily disabled. Yeah. Yes. And through accidents, um, birth, war, poverty, so many natural disasters, or so many if, different ways. If you're lucky, you will age into it. Right, <laughs> right, right, exactly. right, right. Anybody right. can become yes. disabled. Right, so my focus, I usually say it at the beginning of my show, I didn't today, but my focus is um, is celebrating the lives of people with disability. Um, and there's a saying, if you see it, you can be it. Mm -hmm. But we don't see many people with disabilities on the screen, so I want people to be visible. Um, it's good for people. I'm, I'm hoping that somebody would say, wow, if that person can do that, Absolutely. Exactly. I have that disability, well, maybe I can do that too. That's why we have Yes You Can yes. Yeah. <laughs> as our title. Yes, yeah. um, and p apologies to President Obama, we stole it from him. <laughs> and then yeah. the other thing is I like to highlight um, businesses or organizations or town departments and show their reasonable accommodations for people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And I want to have viewers, not only viewers who are disabled, but the general population so that they can see our population. Right. Because I've heard so many people say, oh, we don't need to be accessible because we don't get any disabled people here. Or another thing that I hear often is, I just don't know how to talk to a person with a disability. Yes, yes. And the answer is you talk to them the same way you want to be spoken to. Mm -hmm. um, we are the same, uh, we have the same wants, we have the same needs, the same, mm -hmm. I, I won't say the same needs, but the same desires as um, everyone else. else. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. And we just do things in a little bit of a different way than the majority of the people. I call mm -hmm. it different modes of functioning. Well, well um, you know, the whole focus, I think, in the the world out there, the the powers that be, is to get away from calling it disabled, but calling it differently abled. Exactly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, when I was naming the show, I have access abilities that's a play on the right, word accessibility, right, right. because I didn't want dis in the name. I uh -huh. want to celebrate people. Right, right. Right. We're not poor. We don't want to be pitied. You know, we Absolutely. shouldn't be ashamed of our disability. No, no, because when you're ashamed of your disability, you you don't get out in the world, and you your yeah. disability can get worse. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, so you both have MS. So that's different from either being born uh, with a with a disability or having an accident where you suddenly become disability disabled. But that's actually it's progressive. Yeah. So well, it's not always progressive. I, I should point out that there's two ty there's several types mm -hmm. that they consider. There's primary progressive, where you have a disability that progresses imminently. There's people who are considered relapsing remitting, mm -hmm. which is where you have, you fall into a relapse, it gets bad for a little while, then it goes away. 
And actually, most of the disease-modifying drugs, the, the very expensive disease-modifying drugs that are out there, are for the relapsing, remitting population. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's what's called secondary progressive, which after you've been relapsing, for remitting for a while, you start to get worse. So that's why they call it secondary progressing. Mm -hmm. Wow. So they've, they've come a long way in understanding what MS is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I've probably had it uh, f since I was in my 20s, but did not know it. Right. And um, th it explains a lot of things that happened. But um, until they had the medicines, they really didn't want to diagnose it even because what's the point? You know, there's nothing we can do for you. Right. So having these things now is really good. And didn't they basically use a rule out method, rule out all other oh, yeah. types of sure. things yeah. before sure. they came to the um, diagnosis mm -hmm. of MS? Yeah, um, in my case, um, they f uh, my basic initial problem was fit serious fatigue. Um, you know, I'd have to crawl to bed from the couch at night and um, fall asleep several times on the way and you know, take me several hours to get to bed. But um, they thought that I had a blood sugar problem as a result. And they, um, you know, said stop eating sweets. So when they finally figured out it was MS, I'm like, I don't have to, I can go back to eating sweets and <laughs> I don't have, I thought I might have, um, Lou Gehrig's disease because it runs in my mother's family. Oh, yeah. And so I don't have Lou Gehrig's disease and I can start eating sweets again. I'll take it. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> my situation was completely different. I had been in a uh, serious car accident <clears throat> and uh, up until then experiencing no symptoms or signs of anything wrong. After I was healing, I fractured my right uh, fibula, tibula, and the left knee. So I was laid up for quite a while. Then when I was doing physical therapy to, to learn how to walk and things like that, I had to do a balance beam. And the young PT person said, I just couldn't do it. I could not walk on the balance beam. And I was relatively young. I was 38, 37, 38. And he said, gee, Debbie, you should be able to do this. No problem. Your legs are healed. There's something else. I want you to go see a neurologist. And I said, really? And he said, yes. So I did. And they, uh, the neurologist said, and he was Parisian, and he had quite the accent. And he said, I want you to go for an MRI. <laughs> I think you have MS. And I froze because I thought even being a teacher and things that MS meant MD. You know, oh, I yeah. forgot yeah. about the MS oh. factor. Yeah. And I was really devastated. So he sent me and it was confirmed, yes, I did have MS. <clears throat> and then my, my life changed because then I started working into the MS, I notice more symptoms, you know, that working into it, noticing it, you know, right. that my balance was off, my, my walking was delayed, um, and it just, it changed, you know, but I was, fortunately enough, I didn't need a wheelchair. Um, I didn't, I've used canes and crutches at, at different points of time when I travel I use a cane. I went to Italy and I used a cane and um, you know I, my thought always was because I was a relatively young mother my son was I was a single parent and um, I had to you know fend for him so yeah. Yeah. I had to keep up with him he was going into high school I had to you know, go to the uh, the open houses at the different high schools and things. So I had to really work into the MS. Yeah. But God was good, very good to me. He allowed me to do it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And, and the progressive nature, um, 
as an example, when I was diagnosed in 1991, I was told by the doctor, you'll be in a wheelchair in five years. And um, let's just say something happened. To, we did not have the best relationship, so my attitude was, I'll show you. <laughs> um, and they sent me to physical therapy, which I got kicked off because before the Affordable Care Act, if, P if PT kept you um, even keel from getting worse, that wasn't good enough. You had to keep yeah. getting better. Isn't mm. that terrible? Yeah, mm. that's and really the Affordable terrible. Care Act changed all that. So that's why we had a show on the Affordable Care Act to right. make people understand it's <laughs> right. not just about pre-existing conditions. There's a whole lot of other things about <laughs> this. <laughs> but um, Yeah, so that you can maintain your strength and maintain yes. your muscle tone. Yes and be the best that you can be. Exactly. Instead of the way they used to look at it is, we're gonna wait till you get really bad and can't use your muscles so that yeah. you can go to PT and mm. have yeah. eight or 10 visits. Yes, yeah. and I got kicked off and the physical therapist said, get to a pool and do exercises cause you, it's very hard to do exercises when you have MS because you can't raise your internal temperature. That leads to more problems. So that's why they recommend pool work. And um, I've been swimming and doing PT in the pool for t 20 years, uh, wow. 25 years. And I think that's made so much difference. And that's I have to thank that doctor for motivating me. <laughs> I think for all people with disabilities, it's so important to have some kind of an exercise um, regimen to keep our bodies just as strong as we can possibly keep them. Mm. Well, we did a show at my suggestion on yoga because I do yoga. Yeah. Now I can do a lot of the stances, but there are some stances that I need a, a chair to balance, you know? And uh, we had the yoga instructor on, and she was showing Jim and I chair poses that you could be in the chair and do your yoga. That's so, great. you know, it's something to, there are things out there that people can modify and try and do. You know, physical therapists will work with you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. and uh, to maybe take a class and yeah. find out what it's about. You know. That's great. That's yeah. great. And the important thing is not to be ashamed. Uh, when I was in a, a MS support group initially, I was the worst one in terms of abilities um, in it. And at that time, I used to drive a friend home from it, and she was ashamed that she wobbled, that she didn't look good when she was walking. So she basically shut herself up into her house. Mm -hmm. And she's confined to a chair now, which is sad yeah. because she just would not go out. She wouldn't walk around. She wouldn't do anything because mm -hmm. she, we're, we're all brought up to believe that we have to look perfect and we have yeah. to act perfect like everybody in the general population. And there should be absolutely no shame. No if shame. you walk with a, you know, if you have a wobble or whatever, that's the way you move. It's just a different way of moving. Exactly. There's nothing I've, wrong with it. I've had two cases that one time um, I went on a blind date. <laughs> 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 we were having coffee. And um, I had been talking to the person, emailing back and forth and telephone conversations. This was the first time that we met. So, you know, I knew I was relatively attractive. There was nothing, you know, that he was going to be turned off with. I spoke well and, you know, communication, that was going to be okay. I, I did mention, I said, yeah, I, I said, oh yeah, I have MS. Did he did this. Down? He got up from the table. He said, well, we're done here. We're done here. Oh, I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? So that's, that's really no filter, no filter. Wow. So it, yeah, it, people, it, people react differently. And people also make assumptions. I started having problems in the early 90s and when you saw a skinny person with a cane 
um, in the early 90s, you didn't think MS. You thought AIDS. Yeah. And yeah. I had a lot yeah. of people who made that assumption about me. Mm. Wow. That's terrible. So this is what we're trying to do. We need to break those stereotypical um, ideas of mm -hmm. what certain people look like, what, what people think about them. Yeah. Mm. So, well, this has been so helpful. It's been, it's been a great pleasure to have you both on my show. And I look forward to joining you on your show. One we're of these looking days. forward to that. <laughs> yes, yes, we will. And so hear thank your you story. for your work. And and I know you've been on the commission on disability there. So thank you for all the work that you're doing on behalf of people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So now it's time for my inspirational notable quotables. Today I have two, and they're both by anonymous. And the first one is. We are who we are, and we are okay. And my second one is, don't wait until you've reached your goal to be proud of yourself. Be proud of every step you take toward reaching your goal. So I wanna thank you for watching our show today. I wanna to remind you that um, you can watch us on WCTV um, Comcast Channel 99, Verizon Channel 39, Sundays at 6 o'clock. We're also on Video On Demand and Facebook for WCTV. And we also um, are on YouTube. We're closed captioned for the deaf and hard of hearing. Go to YouTube and put in the words access abilities with no space You'll see our icon of the Statue of Liberty in a wheelchair. Click on that and you'll see all of our episodes. And we also started a Facebook page. So you can find us on facebook.com reverse slash access abilities 2020. So thank you very much. And if, uh, if you or someone you know would be interested in being a guest on our show, we would love to have you. You can email me at accessibilities at gmail.com. I'm sorry, accessibilities2020 at gmail.com. You can also leave comments for us either on YouTube or Facebook. We'd love to hear from you what you think of our show and if you have any ideas of what you might like to see in the future. So thanks a lot. Marquis, up. Okay, Marquis, say bye. Say bye. <laughs> Yeah, boy, yay! Okay. WCTV Connecting our community WCTV Connecting our community, Wilmington, Massachusetts.